Hi, welcome to this episode of Community Beat. I'm Randy Nicewanger. Today I got Rob Hoskins. Rob? How do you do? Good to see you. Thank you for uh, joining me today. Um, Rob, would you tell our viewers a little bit about what you do at, for our organization? Sure. I'm the emergency department manager here at Community Hospital. I've been here 17 years. I've been the manager of the ER for 14 years. Well, and thank you for your contribution to our community. You're probably the department that has the most amount of touch points with our community, and so your contribution is, is greatly appreciated. The 4th of July is a, is a monumental celebration for so many, and in Indiana, um, we know that there is, uh, there's not a shortage of fireworks. <laughs> um, being in the emergency department, I'm sure you have seen your fair share of exposure to firework hazards and dangers with um, you know, utilizing and and um, handling fireworks. Can you tell us a little bit about firework safety and how you would give our viewers some pearls of wisdoms on how to manage fireworks safely? I'll try my best. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, you know, one of the points I'd want to make is that half of the firework injuries that are reported um, come to children five years old and under. Um, we hand them sparklers. Sparklers burn at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and we put that in their hands and, and you always say don't touch. And what do children do? They touch. Um, so keeping safe fireworks in, in children's hands or getting them to observe them instead of touching them um, is, a, is a big plus. Um, adult beverages never mix with fireworks. Um, we tend to kind of miss some of our, our judgment with those and then uh, um, we do kind of dumb things, so to speak. We've seen many injuries over the years come through the emergency department, some serious, some minor, a lot of them are, are burns. Um, but you know, just making sure that you're sober, you're handling them properly, you're handling them the way that they're supposed to, um, leaving the Class B fireworks, which are the professional fireworks to the professionals, um, is always the safest way to, to make sure that nobody's getting hurt. Um, and then always just observe, making sure that, that people are out of the way. If you're doing shows, um, make sure that your crowd is far enough away from the show that nobody's gonna get burned. Um, fireworks, you never know what's gonna come. Um, some of them malfunction, uh, even though we think we're handling them properly, um, and the crowd has to be far enough away to make sure that nothing flies at them or nothing, nobody gets burned from them. Well, I actually learned something. I didn't, I've never really thought about the sparklers and the children's handling. It was one of those things that we always did around yes. the campfires or on 4th of July, you know, spell your name or do right. whatever. Right. Outside of safe distances, I want to, you know, I, I want to display, you know, a, sure. a small fireworks display, display. How do I know what a safe distance really is? How do I know whether or not it's propped correctly? Is there anything in those in, in that category that you can give class thoughts on? Class C, which is consumer fireworks, usually you're about 100 uh, to 200 feet away. Okay. and you have your crowd about that far away. Um, we like to set things in our backyard. Our backyards are uneven. Um, use a piece of plywood. Set them on the piece of plywood. Have another piece of plywood sitting in front of it as almost a shield. So if something malfunctions um, and it's going to shoot, it's going to hit your shield first and then it's going to deflect. Um, there's certain things that we can do. Um, a lot of people use mortars, which is the tube where the ball shell drops down in them. Um, screw those down to a board to where they don't tip over. You know, trying to, to always come up with um, the best way to do it. When you tear up a tube, because most of them are cardboard, um, don't go to Home Depot and buy a PVC tube. Um, a lot of people do that and they think it's the same size. Um, PVC swells and contracts often enough that the shell gets caught when it starts to eject um, and then it blows apart and it's like shrapnel coming at the crowd. So, um, or at you that standing there firing it. So. Um, trying to use the products that they give you um, is, is a plus instead of trying to save some money and do something like that you can reuse, but those PVCs never work. So. When you're loading one of the, the mortar balls into the tube, um, a lot of people, when they get ready to light it because the fuse comes up out of the top of the tube, they light it, but they're leaned over the tube looking down the tube. You never want to look down a firework tube. Um, that's one of the things that, that gets people hurt every year. What if something doesn't go off? You know, there's oftentimes we, we, we light something and we wait. Right. And then nothing. How do we handle that situation? You can oh. soak it down with water, um, which would then just waste the firework. But you just have to leave it alone and keep your distance from it. Um, give it 15, 20 minutes, half hour before you go back to it. Because what happens is the fuse lights and then it starts to go out, but it never really goes out. It just kind of smolders until it catches and then it blows up. 
Um, so just leaving it alone and keeping it unattended and keeping people away from it, safe distances, um, will make a big plus or may make a big impact yeah. on keeping us safe. And then my last question, and I think this is the logical one, what about reusing that firework that doesn't go out? <laughs> Extending, or, or how about that, that wick that, you know, or that fuse that is burned out with a little bit of space left? What would you advise in those situations? I think I know the answer, but... I would throw it away or wet it and then throw it away. Um, anytime that you're going you're gonna to use a lighter, and most of the time most people use hand lighters, you've got your hand right next to it, and if the fuse is only a couple millimeters long, it's going to blow up as soon as you light it. A lot of the fireworks stores, if you have a malfunction, a lot of them will take them back and give you a replacement for it. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you for all that insight. I do feel, I feel like I gained knowledge off of what you had to say. I hope our viewers did too. I'm really grateful for your time and your thank ongoing you. contribution to our community. And we'll see you guys next time on Community Beat.